Evening, Cheeseheads. Welcome to our instant reaction to the Sheffield United. I can't swear. We just looked up. Six, I've got to wait till it, oh, 20 seconds in. Shit show. Once again, <laughs> Spurs have turned up. Fifth round of the FA Cup. Great chance of getting to a, a final and just made a right mess of it. Here to dissect it with me tonight. Top corner, Jack. How are you, Jack? All right, mate? I'm all right in the sense that I'm I'm well. The family's good. My son's here on the on the on the show with us, but you know, we I just watched that match, so you know how I feel. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into it in a sec. Isaiah, welcome back. Um, yeah, how are thanks. you feeling after that disappointing ninety odd minutes of football? Um, terrible, furious, disappointed, all of those things. Yeah. There's a lot we can put into that, isn't there? I mean, we're going to go through the team selection first, but I think this this tonight's show will just be going off on a few tangents because I think anger is probably my main emotion at the minute. I went through all the disappointment and couldn't believe it and just I'm just shocked, really, at how we can keep doing this. So, so starting line-up, we haven't got any slides because we... Because, um, obviously, we never had time to do it, but... Uh, so we start with four string goal, back three of um, Sanchez, Dyer is captain, Ben Davis left centre back, Perisic left wing back, um, Porro right wing back, Saar and Hoybier in the min- middle, um, Richarlison up front with Saar and Lucas um, up there with him. Um, Jack, when you saw the lineup, what did you think? It, well, actually, the lineup really, really surprised me. I thought that I don't know why I thought this, but I thought that the that the club would go with a, fewer changes. I, there was a lot of people floating their lineups out there in chat groups and Twitter and various places. And I saw a lot of these things and a lot of the lineups were something similar to what we saw. I don't, you know, in other words, a massive rotation with six, seven type changes. And I kept saying, I, I don't understand that. I realize it's a Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. So there is some issues but I didn't understand how you could it, be a Spurs fan and see in the history of this club what happens when we do large amounts of rotation. Um, and so I was really surprised that that was what came out. Um, so and disappointed because I, I felt like it would be one of those things is, you know, the idea of start your regular 11 as much as you can and then then make five changes. Don't don't do it the other way around. I mean, I, I, I but I recognize the the problem of Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday is, or Sunday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday is a challenge. I get, I get that. Yeah. I mean, we, we're just going through the team because what we all really want to do is rip into what was on the pitch. But as I, when you saw it, what did you think? Were you with the mind that we needed to change or were you like me thinking, put your strongest 11 out there. Let's win this game. Well, you know, I, I was kind of, my emotions were, you know, everyone needs to like the first 11 needs to start, you know, other than, you know, do you start Sun or Richarlison or Dan Juma, like those sorts of rotations, but Kane Romero, you know, I, I wanted those guys out there. I was okay if we didn't start Kane because, you know, that gives you the opportunity to bring him in, but I wasn't okay with us not starting Romero and not starting Kane. You either need to have Romero back there to prevent us conceding or Kane up there to give us a chance to score. Cause without those two guys, we can't do either of those. And you know, that, that, that I wanted to see at least one of those guys in the team to give us some confidence and stability and actual quality, like world-class quality. Yeah, mate, I, I would have started Kulazewski. I'd have started Kane. I'd have started Romero. I'd have gone to win the game, especially with Sheffield United not having um, not having a full team out either, which is even more embarrassing. And um, I felt, I mean, we can go through the how things went in the game, but I felt it was a fairly tepid affair. I, I didn't think I didn't think Sheffield United were very good, really. We never really tried to. Um, we never really did that much enough to win the game. I felt after, you know, we don't deserve to win a trophy if we're going to go to a game like that, which is going through the motions. But um, Jack, my main, the desire to win that game. We didn't see any desire until they scored, did we? With the, I will say with the exception of, I thought 
Lucas, as usual, was a lot of effort and was actually our only attacking threat. And, and that's, I'll put that in quotes of threat in the first half because he was running at their defense, getting it behind. It's just his quality is such that even when he tries to get past them and cross it, every one of them is either out for a corner or a deflection to the goalkeeper's hands because he doesn't seem to know how to cut it back. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, 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 he was the only tank threat. So he, and, and I thought Poro was lively, if not, again, full of quality. I thought he was lively pretty much outside of those two players. Son was abysmal hesitant i can't i wrote I'm, right, I'm writing my notes i mean i can see throughout his son hesitates son hesitates son hesitates you know and and i just there just didn't seem to be the intensity clearly that they showed uh on sunday not even not even a shadow of the intensity that they showed on sunday Isaiah, do you think um the desire was to be questioned or do you think like against teams like chelsea um west ham with doggo uh, man city sit back we can obviously play our game but then when we come up again, I felt like teams like this, we were sort of dragged down to their level. And um, that's how, and then we just got done on the desire. I mean, we can actually get into the goal in a minute. I think it's poor all around. We can be throwing accusations at anyone. But, you know, is it is it the way we play? Big part of um, why we struggled tonight? Or was it just, was it like, I, I feel like a lack of desire and, you know, just, yeah, just a general lack of desire and fight. What do you think? Uh, I mean, for me, you know, I have a hard time believing that particularly the players that have been here for so many years and failed over and over and over again, I have a hard time believing that they don't care to win. I think what comes across most of the time as a lack of desire is is just a, 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 a maybe a learned shrinking at the moment. They like they have a moment where they're expected to win to get into the quarterfinals of, of the FA Cup and and keep us in a competition that really is only our only opportunity to win a trophy this season after 15 years have gone by since the last time the clubs won one. I mean, I, I just, I think the players are scared players like Sanchez and Dyer and, and Davies who didn't look anywhere near as good as he did against Chelsea. I mean, I know he's playing a different position, but still just in terms of his, his short passing, his simple quality on the ball, I think it, it comes down to, I mean, Kane missing that, Badly missing that really good headed chance in the last minute of stoppage time. Son hesitating on the ball in those situations where he feels like he's got to get the perfect shot. Their confidence, whether they came into the game with confidence, you know, like like um, Davies should have, or whether they came in like Son, you can just see it all leave the team when they come into a game like this where they're, one, expected to win, and two, have to win to, to progress yeah. toward a trophy. They just shrink and cower at that at, at that opportunity and they have for years it's happened too many times isn't it i mean i, I agree with jolie a lack of ideas as well not lack of desire i'd say both tonight until they scored we were just going through the motions turning up thinking we're the better team our quality will shine through and i've seen that too many times and that's what happened i mean let's get into some individual performances uh jack sanchez <sighs> mate yeah how does this yeah, bloke keep? What do we expect when we pick him? I mean, like he was falling over, to, so just tripping over his own feet, and and just ah, oh, embarrassing stuff, wasn't it? Well, I, I bring up HG's comment here because we have to remember Dyer's not even available from on, um, so we're going to probably see him again unless we unless you get unless this proof. The, the only upside to his abysmal performance is maybe you say, okay, that's not an option. So we're going to bring, you know, long lay in the middle, Romero on the right and Davies on the left, because yeah. you just, it, 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 it is, is, and it, that does also means that you're going to play in Paris at left wing yeah. back, which again is it's... a problem. So, but, but back to Sanchez, I, I, it is, it is inconceivable to me how a professional football player who is not under pressure and no one around him can actually like somehow run up to the ball and fall down. I don't, and it's, and if it only happened tonight for the first time, but you, we all have seen them, it's repeated. And I don't, I don't understand how it's possible. It's one thing I understand why he's still at the club because no one's going to pay us any money to take him off our hands. So that's one thing, but to see these sorts of errors and we will, we'll get to the goal later, but just his lack of confidence. I know he hasn't played, but how can you play him 
and give them a run of games when you see that kind of display. It's 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 incredible how poor he is. The the worst thing for me, Isaiah, is last season when he came in and Romero was injured and he played against um Arsenal and then he played till the end of the season against some okay teams, like in the Premier League, he come on and did well. But it always seems to be when he plays crap teams like Sheffield United, Mura, whatever they were called, he just has an absolute stinker when he plays them. And it's just like, God, this guy, the, the best we've ever seen him was when he played between Toby and Jan, wasn't it? He, he came mm-hmm. in and he did good then. It looked like he was going to be, but he's just regressed so much. And we don't really have any other options. But um, Isaiah, what I'll come to you on is um, me and Jack just spoke about Dyer's not going to be available for the AC Milan game. So it looks like Sanchez will come in and you can, you can change that to not play him. But then if you don't play, if you do what we sort of said, bring Lengley in, put Ben Davis back in the back three, then you're going to have to stick Perisic out left wing back. Now, Perisic is a 34-year-old bloke who looks like a 34-year-old bloke now, isn't he? We spoke about this before, but his freak is his, his dead balls have been good, but from open play, I've not been impressed. And he just looks like an old boy. Uh, yeah, you, know, you know, I think with with Perisic, if if you do bring Langley in, your your sort of your choice is you have to play Sanchez in the middle and hope that he's protected by Romero. Um or you have to play uh, Langley or not uh, Langley um babies uh Perisic at left wing back so either way you're you're making a big defensive sacrifice either in the middle of the defense or on the that left side because Perisic can't defend even when he ha- isn't trying to come back from the attacking position even yeah. despite his age that's not it's still only a position of his in the last few years and 1v1 he he gets beaten by everyone of quality and if you're talking about the wingers that that Milan are going to be able to throw at us, uh, it, it's almost an impossible choice to make. Do I risk playing Sanchez, who's going to get into the box and be walked around by a championship attacker? Or do I risk playing Perisic, who will be easily beaten down that left side, exposing Davies and Langley, who, mm-hmm. let's face it, they're not the quickest. They're not the type of guys who could run with a winger down the line. They're going to get beaten. If if you expose them like that, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I mean, no idea. I mean, Joel's Bob on here. Any you could go four three three or four four two three one. However, you want to dress it up. That that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, I, I yeah. Don't think it you, matter yeah. how many defenders were out, Conte would still play fucking three at the back. Right. That's that's, the, that's, that's the exactly issue. right. Yeah. We we're trying well, to fit we're trying to fit the lineup into what we know it's gonna the players in the lineup we know what's gonna be yeah, now what we he, actually think Joel's, would give us the best chance to win. Joel's right there. That's what well, I Long, do. Long if you're struggling, you go change it. Langley has, has shown in his career. I mean, the reason the Barcelona fans hate him so much is he played in a back four with them. And because he's so slow and and has momentary lapses in concentration, when he's playing in a in a two center back setup, he's actually like really poor. I think if you were going to go to four at the back, which you're not, then I think you would have to play Sanchez. Um, I mean, you know, even if, if Conte wanted to change the lineup, he wanted to go to a back four. The players that we have, you can't play Davies as as the left center back in a in a in a back four. He's too small. Can't play Longley. He's too slow. Can't play Sanchez ever at all because he's terrible. So <laughs> even if he wanted to change the way that we're set up and the way that we play, he really doesn't have. He's not been given the options to do that. And there's so many of these players like Sanchez, like Davies, who they'll put in a serviceable shift against some of these, you know, some of these really in, in these important games, whether it be City or Chelsea. And then they'll come and drop a performance like this against Sheffield. Like you said, there's so many of these players who if, if he's talking to Levy, if, if Paratici or Conte or whoever is talking to Levy and say, oh, no, we need another center back. And they're like, well, you have Sanchez for this season. I mean, remember how good he was against Chelsea? And it's just this cycle that's kept a terrible player like Sanchez at the club for, you know, however many years now, seven, probably, six yeah. or seven. I mean, it, it it's just, yeah, it's yeah. terrible. Um, I mean, um, so I was in the group. We were talking, weren't we, Jack? I mean, there was chat in our group, and um, some people were relatively happy with with the first half. In my head, I'm thinking, 
We haven't yeah. done. We haven't done anything. We're playing a, a lower, a, a low, a lower opposition. We should be going out there tonight to win that game as quick as we can with our best team, and then make changes. We just didn't do enough, and it's like we keep playing. You know, in the Premier League, we've sort of got away with it, and that's how we play. But tonight, we needed to do more. We needed to. We needed to win that game, a really winnable game. We didn't really need to feel them out. We should have took the game to them. And I just don't feel we did that. And it's just and, and it's just really frustrating and makes me really angry. So, like, what well, we'll just let's get on to the goal. Let's get on to it. Because I mean, really, between at, before the goal, not a lot happened. There was a lot of huffing and puffing, a lot of long balls. Richarlison had a, a sort of shot which went bringing miles over. But Jack, their goal. What an absolute cluster. What you're putting it yeah. down to. Just poor all round, one one individual mistake or no, no, no. I think many, actually, many individuals. Yeah, it, it, it starts. I wish I could I wish I had it and I could I wish it would be great if we could like capture the video we had rights to it and we could put it up because I would want to start it back about 20, 30 seconds before it, the it, before the game. Sorry, yep. Jack. Um I see, yep. Craig is in his car back <sighs> from the game. Should we just Guys, get you? Oh, I'm so sorry, mate. Honestly, Let's mate, I a year ago to the day, I was sat in, in a car on the way back from Middlesbrough after a shocking performance. And yet again, year to the day, we've gone there. Within 10 minutes of that match starting, I said to my brother next to me, I said, this is Middlesbrough all over again. And I wasn't disappointed, was I? It was no. diabolical from start to finish today. What was going on? Talk so, to me about Sanchez, guys. Yeah, Craig. Well, you've missed the Sanchez debate, mate. So we'll let you have your say. There was no debate. There was no well, debate. No, there's no debate. Now we've had our say on Sanchez, but also, mate, we've um, called into question the desire of the players, the desire to win the game. Um, yeah. And we've come to the conclusion. Joel in our chat has said it's not. It not just he didn't say. He said it's not the desire. It's we didn't have the. I can't remember the comment now, but we didn't have sort of like the guile to to beat them. But I know I said it was lack both. of creativity. Creative. Yeah, we didn't we, have the creativity and we didn't but, have the um, desire either. No, I agree. But that's been our season, isn't it? It's this inconsistency into our season where we, we turn up one week and the next week we don't turn up. And we, you know, when we've got to go north of Watford, we don't have that guy. We don't have that, that, that we don't pump our chests out and, and, and take command of the game. Man to man, there's not a player in that in that team tonight, Sheffield team, that you would put into our starting eleven. Even that eleven that started the game, there's not one. There's not one player. But yet they outplayed us for pretty much the entire period of that game. And it in I'm fed. I'm I'm tired of it now. And I keep you know these games like tonight. I remember why you know I I, I sold my tickets on the exchange for being, you know the season ticket on the exchange for the last five games. It's games like tonight, and I realise that you make the effort to come all the way up to Sheffield in shit traffic to, you know, sat in a car park, not moving for 30 minutes. And you, what, what have the players done? Nothing. And you know what? The fans tonight were oh, good. absolutely, we for me, phenom phenomenal. We did our part tonight. We did our part. We sang from start to finish. Even when we were 1-0 down, we were still giving it all. And not did the players give us nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I, I just thought, you know, We've got to ask questions now of why, what, I mean, I'm, the starting lineup was atrocious. Why do we not go strong? Start oh, strong, been, get, two, get two goals up and then make the changes. Don't do it the other way. We, you know, we gave, we gave Sheffield the end. The longer that game went on, as soon as it, you know, it was inevitable that was going to happen. It was, it was awful. Awful. Craig, are you in? Are you in the chat for, for the foreseeable, or are you just coming in, dropping in for? 10 yeah, I'll say. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sat in a car right. park trying to get out, so I'm fine to chat. Right, mate. So what we'll do is we we, we got onto Jack. We all these po points we've discussed, Craig. We've said we should have started strong. I said I'm so pissed off that we never started strong. Left Kane on the bench. A game we needed to win. Trophy. We're all desperate for a trophy. So what do we do? Drop our probably two most creative threats in Kane and Kulusevski. Um, but what we we were just going on to the goal, um, Craig. So Jack, sorry we interrupted you yeah. to bring Craig in. Sorry, Jack. Thought, no, 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 no. I'm really glad you on came the goal. in. Because I, 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 obviously, I you. caller was. Um, I don't know whether he was baiting me, blame completely blaming Hoybier, who wasn't faultless for it. He he was crap for the goal. But I think there was a lot more going on than just Hoybier. So Jack, give us your thoughts on what yeah. happened there. 
and I said, I wish we had rights to the video and we could re re roll it back about 20, 30 seconds before the goal, because I, I, I'm so, you know, I'm in my living room um, and my son, as I there is on, he's on speakerphone is from his room in Southampton. My wife's on the couch beside me and she starts going, I hear her say, just let them pass it around you. Just let them pass it around you. I mean, you know, she, she was already getting up to leave because she could see 30 seconds in advance that that ball's going in the back of the net. The entry pass into the box to a guy standing in the corner among three different Spurs defenders. There was no pressure on the entry pass. It was, it was just a 10 yard pass to a guy who was able to face up and turn. And then of course we get this great wonderful bounce that lands on um, whatever his name's the goal scorer. I've, I've lost his name. And day and day yeah. was it and day. Yeah. And here's the thing. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a player and I'm a defender. I'm not any good. Otherwise, you know, I'd be, I'd, I wouldn't be working for a living, but, I know enough that you don't you don't play the guy in leaning to he's to your right giving up the center of the goal even if he's not right footed you don't show him into the goal I don't understand what I don't I'm replaying this from Sanchez I don't even understand what he's doing he's just like he's like falling over as he's trying to say this way come on won't you go this way and the guy just cuts right and walks right and doesn't run trots around him and then Dyer doesn't step up and challenge. He just goes down for the block, right? And then and then he hits the near post. And a six yeah. seven guy who's leaned into the far post is not going to get down for the for the ball in the near post. I mean, I, I just it's it's mind numbing. And I don't know how many goals have been scored against Spurs like that in in my even short time supporting this club. But it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's always cool. in I mean, these games too. So it's it's in yeah. these games. It's these rainy games in Stoke, so to speak, right? Where you yeah. should be winning. <laughs> yeah, we. Don't. I know it wasn't saw, in Stoke. Don't kill me on the on the show. <laughs> I just saw Azaria do one of these when you were talking about it. So Azaria, let's have your <sighs> let's have your opinion on the goal, mate. Well, you know, I mean, I, I like my dad. You know, I, I played for a number of years. I spent most of my time as a terrible striker and um, eventually found my way to center back for, for a while. And, you know, I, I wasn't a, a great defender positionally. I was just, you know, the big guy. And um, But I'll tell you, one thing I don't think I would ever do, even on accident, is is legitimately just, like, show someone toward the goal, like he was saying, just just, like, point this way with a big neon blinking sign, go to goal, the way Sanchez did there. He's a professional footballer. I don't care if it's Harry Kane or Dan Juma in that position. Any professional footballer should go, you know what? I should probably put myself between this guy and the ball and the goal and maybe send him toward the line. And Sanchez does the exact opposite. And and like somebody said in the chat, I mean, I, I think, how, how many times have we like had this conversation regarding – Sanchez or Dyer or Davies or Tonganga, or Tonganga after games like this. I mean, it's every time. It's, it's yeah. truly incredible that they can make these. It's not even mistakes. It's just yeah. like crazy moments, game right. after game after game. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you bang on right. Craig, go on, mate. Let go me on tell you the front. issue. Let me tell go you on. the issue, right? Go on. The last six years, we've been knocked out of the FA Cup. 17 18, the back three, Dyer. Davies, Sanchez. 18-19 when we got knocked out. The back two is a back four. The two, Dyer Sanchez. 19-20 when we got knocked out. The back two, centre half, Dyer Sanchez. 21, 20, uh, 2021, the back two, Davies Sanchez. 21-22, Dyer Davies. 22-23, Dyer Davies Sanchez. Say no more. That's the yeah. issue. <laughs> Craig, I don't, I don't want to upset you, mate, even more. But have you seen the draw for the quarterfinals? Yeah, Blackburn. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I said on the way out, we was walking out the stadium and we was walking back, and I said to, I said, I, my, my biggest frustration was the draw to the FA Cup was wide open this year. That's yeah. my biggest. As a, as a, all, we, all we want, the, the the common denominator all Spurs fans have is we just want to win a trophy. And when you see the draw as open as it is. And we've, we've been drawn up. Yeah, it's a way, granted. And, you know, it's tough at Sheffield. I'm not saying it isn't. Sheffield are a good side. But as I said, we should be beating them. We just great. should be. They had a scratch team out. They had a scratch yeah, team I mean, out. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you, Gibbo. I don't know whether it's their first level or not. All I know yeah. is, man for man, 
I didn't know any of them. And there's not one player on that pitch that would come into our squad, let alone into the team. So we've got to be beating them. And, and why are the players not seeing that opportunity and going out on that pitch and saying, I'm not going to let this happen this year. We are going to get through. We are going to, we are going to stand up. We are going to be counted. Because if they did that and they put the performances in like they did against Chelsea, you know, and, and the other times when we showed up this season, we don't lose that game. You can play that, you know, if, you, if they turn up, you can play that game a hundred times. We win it 99. The fact is, those last six years I've talked about, when we come out of the FA Cup, the show, the performances, the common denials have been dire, literally dire. And and last year at Middlesbrough, it was rubbish. It was awful, you know, and, and tonight it was awful. And do you know what? It doesn't matter if we were, who we were playing tonight. We could have been playing Wrexham. We would not have scored if we played that performance we just won't, it's not good enough. And I know, Gibber, I'm not the one to be negative, but I'm so, I'm so angry and frustrated at the opportunity that we've thrown away tonight. That's what I'm really disappointed in. It's an opportunity to win a cup. You're preaching to the converted here, pal. <laughs> I, I keep saying that these players were... Uh, the, uh, uh, and I'm, no, I, I'm not a massive negative person, but I, I do... I, I try and say what I see. And yeah. everything you've come out with there... I totally agree with it. It's the same place. And you even put Son in. I mean, I, I try and keep Kane out of these discussions as much as possible because without him, we would really be in it. We would, mm. you know, we'd be nowhere near where we are. But, you know, but even like, so like Son's, your Davises, your, that even though Son's been brilliant, I know he hasn't this season, but they let us down it on these, on these big, big occasions. They can't seem to, to get themselves up. Like Son was dreadful tonight, but, like yeah, for, I agree. my take of the goal, I'll come to you on the goal. For my take, Hoybier jumps up, does some stupid little jump, and then sort of like puts his arms up. I think worried that if he made a challenge, he'd give away a penalty. I mm-hmm. think you've you got to do a little bit more there. And then obviously, like you're saying, Sanchez shows him toward the goal. But then I think there's still there's still two players in front of. I think um, Dyer's one of them, and he just mm-hmm. does one of those little turns on the floor, doesn't he? Hands behind the back, and then it goes in the bottom corner against. Um, Forster, could he do better? There? I mean, it's just, it's just a shit show all round, wasn't it? Craig? I mean, I, I, I was the other side of the ground, obviously, and the, our stand was the opposite side. So, all, I, 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 as I saw it, I saw the player making that run into the box. He seemed to be, have the better of two players. Two players seemed to stand off, and he had a shot, which I didn't think was particularly a strong shot. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. You watched it on TV and saw the replays, but I, from where I was, I thought. Foster could, Foster could have done a bit better. But what, what? how did he run through four players in that way? That's what I don't understand. And it's it's just weak. It's just, it's yeah. just, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. But, I don't know. But, you yeah. tell me, guys. You saw, you've seen the goal, yeah. you know, yeah. post up in a replay. It, you'll see think... it back, but it's a lot yeah. of stationary defending. It's it's a lot of people not trying to give up penalty, trying to, you know, again, playing with their hands behind their back as, as defenders have to in this stupid game. And it's a lot of passive defending and no one taking responsibility. Again, they did get a lucky bounce, as, as it seems always the case. But just the, San, the, 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 the entry pass is the problem in my mind. And, and, and Sanchez just having a complete walkabout is, is the other. Well, yeah. you know, I said 15 minutes before the goal when, when Sanchez had had his first few bad passes. And then again, when he just looked like he was confused at what he was supposed to do with the ball and fell over. I said, you know, at some point we're 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 coming to the end of this game, and if Sanchez stays on, he's going to cost us a goal. We've got Romero on the bench. And I said that early, and I feel like yeah, you did. I mean, I, I hate to keep blaming the managers when the same players are are no blame them, blame the them. Problem. They should be but picking at some them. point. You have to know who Sanchez is. You start to watch him, you know, do just for lack of a better word, boneheaded shit like that, three, four times in quick succession, you say, all right, we got to get him off the pitch. We don't want to overtax Romero, but we also want to win a damn trophy. And and, yeah. and when you want to win a trophy, you say, all right, Christian Romero, one of the best defenders in the Premier League, World Cup winner, go out there for Sanchez because that guy is a fucking idiot. If you're going to play blokes like Sanchez, you know how they defend. We have got to be, in that game for me, in that first half, even if he has, we have got to be more on the front foot. We have got to go for it. We've got to, like I said, let's let's kill them. Let's kill their yeah. spirit. Let's dampen them. The, That's what the you've first got to half do. for me. But we don't yeah, we just fir- go through first halves to, all the yeah. time. Fucking tepid. The, the first half for me, Gibbo, and I, I, again, my reflections at half time on the on the terraces was 
they didn't have they didn't really let us score and didn't really have any clear cut opportunities. But we didn't pose a threat either. I mean, there was no, no real. There was no. There's not enough. Exactly. Not like you said, Gibbo. Why aren't we going out and 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 getting that early goal and being on the front foot and being aggressive and pressing high up the pitch and putting them under pressure? Because every time you know they, they, they weren't they were they were awful. Every time we put a tiny bit of pressure, even a half press. The yeah. ball, they was kicking the ball out of touch, out of play, out, out for a throw in. Yes. The keeper wasn't able to get keep the ball in play. He was washing it right, but we weren't even putting a half press on half the time. It was just, it was, it was just so poor, well, so poor. Well, and, and sorry, right, I'll I'll say, I'll, 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 right. we got away with that against Preston because Preston were really, really poor, and Sonny pulled out a worldie, and then we're away, aren't we? And that's, I think, that's what we were expecting tonight. I think we just. The same our league, league um, a championship team will go through the motions, but we'll be all right because someone like San or or Lucas or Richarlison will pull some out the bag. I mean, we'll get on to Richarlison later. Well, not later, we'll get on to Richarlison in a bit. But I don't know about you, Jack, but like, so why, like, these tepid first halves we keep up, it, it doesn't, it, it fails quite often with Spurs. You know, we've done really well recently against a better quality team where I think you can sort of get away with doing that. But like, ah, oh, it was, it was, there's just not enough was there, Jack. Just not enough from the team yeah. tonight. Full stop. Yeah, I, I, I'm, no, that's correct. You, there was not enough. I mean, I'm a little bit of an outlier. I thought the first half uh, wasn't as terrible as other people. So I'd have to, I'm not going to watch it again, of course, but I, I felt like it was better than other people thought. We were, to Craig, you're right. There was many attempts to press. It was a little uneven. You know, I've got the vantage point of the TV cameras looking down and the front line was pressing, but then then the next the next line of support wasn't there. In other words, the, the press was not coordinated. And that may be because, okay, we started with seven changes and that might be the problem. Now that you could still assign the coaching staff as a problem of, okay, the second team's got to be drilled enough to know how to press it as a team. But they 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 were making some I wouldn't say full press, but they were definitely higher up the pitch. And you're right, they were turning it over and turning it over. And if not for Hoyberg's, you know, failed header back to Forrester, they didn't have a chance of getting near the, the penalty box. So mm. we, we were, we were, we were playing. Okay. It was just that to your point is sun's terrible. And, and, and we got nothing out of Charleston. And then and, did I say Kane's terrible? If I said that, I mean, right. son was having a terrible game. Yeah. Um, and then Mora does the typical thing where he can beat three guys and then lose the ball. Runs up his so own ass. What, yeah. So when that's the problem, when that's your front three and and they were tempting, I, I wrote it down in my notes several times. There were a lot of attempts to ping the ball between the three of them really tried to ping the ball. There was a lot of one touch passes, entry balls, flick back out, out to the wing. There was a lot of attempts. I saw the pattern of play, but the lack of quality on the ball, you know, was so yeah. evident that it didn't get pulled off. So again, that final ball wasn't there all night long. And actually, oh, sorry, the, yeah. the, the yeah. sad thing was the first half was probably better than the second half up until the last. Well, it was. Minutes. I wasn't impressed with the first half. It was better. I'm oh, sorry. Let's have this out then. Calso, Richie was awful as well. Now, um, I've never been a massive fan of Rich Richarlison. When he scored those two goals against Marseille, I was like, fair play. But people were calling for him. We even dropped Kulazewski for him at one point. People were going on and on about his performances. The bloke still not scored in the Premier League. He hasn't scored since September. He looks like he started sulking in the end, I think, before, just before he was brought on. So he had a face like a smacked ass. What do you think to Richarlison? What's your opinion on Richarlison, Isaiah? Well, you know, there's been the reports sort of floating around that, that he wasn't actually one of Conte's targets. He was someone that Levy identified and Paratici approved and, um, you know, whatever, what, however he ended up at the club. I feel like if if we were playing, you know, something like a four four two, um, or even you know like a some modified version of that where Kane slightly deeper, where Charleston slightly deeper, he could actually be a decent strike partner with Kane if you have you know like a solid back four, solid couple of midfielders, and a solid couple of you know like classic right and left midfielders in in. You know, you both Son and Kulisiski could play those roles. So could Perisic um, play that left midfield role. So he's not actually the left back. Um, you know, I feel like he actually has the qualities because he's not great in the hold up play. But if he sat up there next to Kane 
and his main job, get in the box, be another target. If the ball falls to him, you know, have a strike on goal. He, he gets in those positions for Brazil. If all he has to do is lay it off to the likes of Neymar for Brazil or in our, our case, Son, who is actually, if he were actually playing well, or Kulisevsky, I feel like he has the qualities to be someone who maybe isn't a guaranteed starter every game, but is a useful member of the squad. But in a in this back three, the uh, three four three as a right winger, I don't think it works well for him. He has to spend so much time of his defending that he he gets few chances to actually take the ball with him, and and his touch is so bad that he wastes most of those. And then, you know, if you play him as a striker with a horribly out of form son and a Lucas who, you know, is the same as he always is. And also coming back from however many months and injured with no Benton core behind him, no, no one to create anything in midfield besides an inexperienced, you know, talented, but inexperienced player in, in Sar, he's just, he's a limited player with a, with a specific skill set, And if you can't use him within his limits, then he doesn't he, he doesn't work out well at all. He looks terrible and he, he works hard. I mean, particularly against Chelsea, he had the most tackles on the team, or maybe second to Romero. Second most, yeah. But he he it's just he's not working because he's not being used in the very narrow arena in which he can be used effectively as sort of a luxury player who stays up front and just tries to get on a goal. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Craig, I've I've not been impressed with him, really, have I all season? I've I've been saying it in a lot of, but I think he I think he's overrated, mate. I think he's bang average. I think he I think sixty million was massive, massively overpaid. Well, probably paid about twenty million too much for him. I mean, um, what what where are you at with Richarlison at the minute? I, I mean, he he's not. I I think give Richarlison the benefit of the doubt. He hasn't played that much, has he? And he's like any player. If he's not playing and he's not getting game time consistently, he's never he's going to struggle to find his form. I think it's not helped. I don't think we're, as 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 I as eloquently put, we're not playing in, into his strengths. You know, he's not a, he do, he's not an effective ride ride right ride right of the th- the front three. It's not his best position. We need to be playing him. You know, in that number nine. Well, where he played tonight, essentially. But I think tonight he was, spot. yeah, yeah, exactly. He needs someone behind him. He needs someone behind him. But tonight, no, exactly. And that's the thing. So, but he was awful tonight. I mean, he had opportunities. I think he had that shot when he should have probably laid the ball out to Poro, was it? Coming in on the right-hand side of the box. Yep. Um, and what about the, and he, the corner flag? Yeah, yeah, the corner. I mean, that was, that was ironic. But the, so he was poor tonight, really poor. But then there's, Everyone was poor tonight. He, he's not, you know, he's not alone in that on fact. Own, I think, no. no. So, you know, if if he was poor in the team of people around him, you know, that was good, you were thinking, well, okay, the reality is, for whatever reason, no one showed up tonight. None of them had the, the guts to turn up and play. And, and that's it. So he's still got credit with me. I still think he's got a chance to come good. But we need to find a way to play to his strengths, as, as I have said, and, and not, um, and not, trying to you know we're trying to put him you know he's a square peg and trying to put him in a round hole it's not yeah. it's not going to work we need to find that we need to find a system that will do sadly the we're reality gonna is it. it's not going to do that we're not we know we can debate the you can we go for the back or whatever against milan when we got die suspended we're not it's going to be three at the back and we're going to play three four three and that's it so um sadly i think it's going to be a you know, a long, hard season for Richardson would probably end up scoring probably no more than a couple goals, probably. Which as, is piss as harsh as that is. Million. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, um, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, like, another thing, when when you think about it, I thought Skip, when he came on, showed more endeavour and a little and more quality than Saar. And Saar's only a young kid, so I'm not going to get on his back. But Skip had a great game against Chelsea, come back into the team, um, scored a goal, played really, really well. Game we want to win. Benches him. Just another thing that winds me up, Jack. You, you know, he, he he was more. I know, I know. Sort of like they scored, didn't they? He was on the pitch when they scored, wasn't he? He, yeah, did but, he come on but he had nothing goal? to do with. But, yeah, but he had nothing to do. With, but what I'm saying is, once there you go. Do you know what I mean? A player on form, player who's coming. He's not played a lot of games. To be fair, he probably needs to play more games to get even more match sharpness. 
and he's on the bench. There's no, there was absolutely no need. And the same with Romero. Two players who were like Romero sort of played himself back into a bit of form because he's not been, he hasn't looked really fit, has he? Get players who actually need games. When you're winning, people want to play games, even if they're every three days. There was just no need to, to pick that team tonight, in my opinion. No need at all. Yeah, I can make a case for every single player that, that got rotated in as to why they should play. I just can't make a case for why all of them had to come oh. in and play. And I think we talked about that a little bit early on. What I think we should be a little bit aware of is we don't, uh, not that I have a lot of faith in our medical department, but we don't have the data on where people are. They have all these red zones that players can get into. Skippy has had a long time off. And I don't know the status of his fitness, so maybe he needed some time off. Maybe the same thing could be said for Kulosevsky, maybe Romero. These players who are still coming back from injury, we've heard about how Sun has had an issue going on. So I can make, I can understand why there's a case to be made for each one of them. But again, going back to the same at the beginning of the show, seven changes from a, t a team that was really starting to look good doesn't make sense. And and I want y'all's comment on what you think of of this. I pulled this from earlier. I haven't shown it. I don't buy into this at all. I think this is, yep. this, but I could be wrong. I'm going to just get you guys to think about it is we all know that this is true, that there's no money in the FA cup. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that is without a doubt, I, but I, but this comment seems to suggest that Levy has veto power or the ability to influence the starting lineup. And I would say maybe if Mason were the head coach, I might, subscribe to this maybe but not with the current current people in charge on the on the pitch i mean i don't know y'all's thought i don't well, think I, that I, there's i understand a bit of where he's coming and, and money oh, I do. Is right. but um tonight for me is down on the, the the coaching staff for the team they've picked and then i'd probably on this occasion even more so down on the players for their attitude and desire towards winning a game in my mind that should have been, this is how I see it tonight. You put your best 11 out and you go for it. It's a cup game. You're away from home. You're the stronger team. As Craig has said, not one of their players would get in our team. They put out a weakened team. You go for the throw. You knock the stuffing out of them. You get in front. Because when Spurs get in front, we are the better team. That's That's when we're good. So let's go for the kill, get the goal. And then these players who may be, on you know in the red zone or whatever, then you can bring them off because you can. How many subs can you make? Five, pretty much change out the frigging team. So uh -huh. why can't we do that? Why do we have to stick to this? Well, first half we we feel out an opponent and we pass it backwards and we pass it sideways and then when we're, we we don't take any unnecessary risks against Sheffield United who are playing a weakened team, it's just nonsense. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, Zoe, what's your point? I mean, obviously, I've probably gone off on a tangent from that comment. What do you think? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with with the last comment that was up there. I, I mean, e even if Conte were the type of guy who would let himself be easily influenced by, um, by you know, a, a character like Levy, if he would if he would sign up to you know letting someone have that power over him. Certainly not now when it, it seems more and more clear that he's not going to be here next season. Um, there's no way that Conte is letting him decide which players to play in which games. I think, you know, going back to what my dad said about the, um, about the, the medical situations, we don't have all of that data and there's going to be players who are approaching their red zones and everything post injury. And I know every, all of the last few games Romero has played since the world cup, really, he's gone down a few times holding that knee he's been struggling with. <clears throat> so again, like you said, you can make a case for why they rested all of those players individually, but at some point it's not, you know, the, the time for me to maybe rotate a few of those guys out is, is is against Wolves at the weekend. I know it's the you know the tougher opponent supposedly, but I mean, if, if you're talking about trying to keep Harry Kane at the club, if you if anyone in the above Conte has any hope of keeping him at the club left, surely surely it's the FA Cup that does. We're not going to win the Champions League. I hate to break it to everyone, but we're not going to win the Champions League. Uh, we Harry know that's gone for sure. I mean, the, the 
this was the time to say, yeah, I know maybe we're pushing it a bit with Skip, pushing it a bit with Kane, pushing it a bit with Romero, but a few of these guys, if not all of them, or most of them, have to be on the pitch today. We have to win this game and get to the next round. Adaya, I think, I don't know what you guys think, our squad is not good enough to make six or seven changes or five changes or four changes. That's the reality. That's it. So players in the red zone or not in the red zone, I'm sorry, you start Romero today, it makes a difference to us. We are instantly more solid yeah. at the back. It gives us a better foundation to play out from better the back. On the ball. You know, for better on the ball. He, he's more progressive with the ball. Sanchez, whenever he moved forward with the ball, it was embarrassing. You just, it was, yeah. I heard clown music in my head every time he went forward with the ball. It was, you know, it was, it was awful. And so I think that changed, but Romero has been out injured for ages. It's not like he's been suspended for a couple of games. He's not, he's not in near the red zone. So this argument about, he needs games. Exactly. We need to play consistency. Yeah, Skippy is that Skippy's a young player. You know what I mean? There's no way that he's gonna sit there and say, I need a rest. So you've got to you've got to play the players that are in form. For me, we're not good enough. We haven't got a good enough squad to get away with making that many changes. That's the reality of the situation. And we've been burnt again because we've done what we've done in every other year when we rotate players, we go out to a low opposition team because we underestimate or we overestimate our ability. That's I don't know which one it is. It's, it's somewhere in the middle, mate. It's somewhere in the middle. Like for me, right? Start Romero, rest Royale, and bring Porro in. Yeah, fair enough. Play Kane and Kulazewski and bring Son in because Richarlison has been playing. Or play Richarlison, play Kate. Just do do something like that. And, and, and then if you're going to make as well, if you need to make another change against Wolves, do the one somewhere. But don't like you don't no need to make all those changes. Like, you know, Davis has been playing well at left wing back. He's actually been quite good going forward at left wing back, hasn't he? You're on mute, Craig. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, is I agree with you, mate. Keep mute, keep yeah. him there, yeah. Keep him there. Keep him on, keep him at left wing back. Like you say, play your players where they're with the inform the players and keep them playing. Win the game, then make your changes. I've got no problem with that. I've got no problem with getting two goals up and then deciding to bring off Davis or bring off, um, you know, bring on Sanchez or whatever for Romero. Bring off Kane, give him a rest. But start your strongest team. I mean, that all said though, you know, aside from that, 30 minutes of that game, you know, a, Romero aside, we had, you know, from an attacking sense, we probably had our strongest team available to us and we still didn't do anything. We still didn't create anything in that 30 minutes. We had Kulu, Son and and Kane up top, you know, uh, Hoiberg and and, and Skippy. We didn't, we still didn't create anything going forward. We didn't look any better. And so I think we could have played 180 minutes today. I don't think we would have scored. Well, That's James, the reality. James, James, James I, I wanna... too big an influence to not to bring him on in those situations like that. I think you need. I don't know what you think, Jack. You're coming on to it. I think Kane. You need to start. He's the focal point of the team all the time. One hundred percent. Kane is the most important player. He's the best player in and the focal point of that team. It literally yeah. revolves with him. If he plays, if he's not good, we're no good. Yeah, unfortunately, on, that, yeah. that is true. I will say, Craig, that there were actually two or three actually should have been excellent chances. I mean, because uh, Perisic did put in um, Son at the near post when he should have been playing Kane, who was wide open beyond him. You, that would have been on your end of the pitch. So you could probably have seen that he yeah. just made the wrong choice. K- Son on his head running at the near post is not the goals that he scores. If it's Harry running there, I, okay, that's one thing. But Harry's free. That ball should have been going past him. Uh, and then uh, I had already walked upstairs to come into this, but it sounded like Harry missed a, a sitter towards the end of the match too on, yeah. on a header. Uh, there were there were it several chances. It wasn't a sitter. But okay, you so expect Kane to at least, least get, get on that frame. Target. Yeah. 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 So, 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 I mean, I think there were a number of chances, and then there was the chance that Richarlison would hit the corner flag when he should just be laying it out to Poro. There were plenty of times that players got into dangerous positions. They're just missing – they're just making the wrong decision in that moment. And some of those players are first 11 players, and it's, 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 it's unfortunate. Um, but I do – I just want to – I don't want to – I don't want to derail the conversation too much, but I just don't want to get at this, meet, this, this, this show off without at least getting special mention – for one of the best performances on the pitch 
and that was our center referee because there were four legitimate yellow cards oh, in the first yeah. half. I'm sorry. I'm oh, not excusing God. our perfor- I'm not excusing our performance. No. He wasn't the reason we lost, but Baldock should not have been should not have made it on to the halftime. Yeah. <laughs> there was three cards and then there was a fourth on another guy whoever dragged Lucas by by the shirt to the ground. I don't understand that. I it didn't again, I'm not saying that's the reason they lost. It's just it just yeah. is infuriating to see those sorts of things. And then, and then Sar comes in one time late and gets a card yeah. right away. I just is very frustrated. The standard yeah. of officiating is poor. I mean, I was like, do you want to get into that? Because of what I was going nah, to come on to was, well, he what does, I was going to, yeah. Do you want to have a, do you want to have a quick, um, do you want to I mean, quickly have a go at the ref, mate? You go I'll for it. be a broken record. If, if it's, it's every game, you know, it, it's just, yeah. you, you can't rely on them to even no, have enough that's... of an understanding of the rules. Mate, you're you're bang on right there. You you can't rely on refs. We shouldn't be. Um, yeah, they make they make terrible decisions, but we gotta we gotta make it not matter if you get what I mean by doing our own doing our own job. Do you get what I mean by that? Yeah, As especially get, yeah Sheffield's B team. Yeah. So where what I want to talk about now um, is not where do we go from here because we've been here before. But we'll be here again. But it's yeah, we'll be here again <laughs> as it stands. But I don't think we can take anything from this game. I don't think there's any positives to take from the game. So we're out the FA Cup. I mean, Jack, you, you might come back and say you do. So where let let's say what next for Spurs then? What next? What positive. Uh, okay, now? I'll play that role. I'll play that role. Here are the positives. Yeah. I think that um there was enough. I saw Poro has, you know, again, I, I'm not saying he's world beater, but yeah. I thought there were moments where I could see his uh, attacking quality, quality. Yeah. And his, and his, and his confidence. Yeah. He wants to take people on. He wants to get into the final third. And, and that's great to see whether he played at right wing back or right wing or whatever. I, I was, I saw moments that I saw, okay, I see a player there. Who knows? Maybe not, but I saw that's a positive. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe the, that this coaching staff sees the positive and that is in that you cannot play Sanchez. The only yeah. time that he can be pl- played is when you are, you know, you're going to be defending a one goal lead and the other team is just going to launch balls into the box. Yeah. I'm fine with that. If you need to bring him in for a midfielder or, or Skippy, who's five ten or whatever, and you need to pack the box and you need, I'm fine with that too. But I, I'm, that would be a positive. If they realize that he cannot play, then I realize he's going to play against Milan. Um, other maybe than that, not now. maybe not Jack, maybe he's played his way out the team. I just don't know how you, without Dyer, I don't know how you, I don't know how you, well, you can't play a three, four, three if, if he doesn't play, but, but the only other thing would be, um, I don't know. What did everyone think of the, the few minutes that Dan Juma got? I also felt like he was trying to take an initiative. I thought he was trying to, you know, take people on. He's trying to, he, he, he made, I thought he looked fairly lively. I'm why, disappointed as hell that he didn't start. I don't understand that at all. Why other did we than bring him in and then not huh? play him. And like, yeah, I mean, bring well, him in and then the only thought the I had was why he didn't start was that we knew that there was Sanchez Poro and that's the defensive disaster waiting to happen pot- potentially. And then yeah. Lucas was the, the player who you thought could track back and provide some help because Dan Juba is not a defender. That's the only reason I can think that he didn't play for Lucas because there's yeah. no other reason. It's not like we're selling Lucas in the summer. He's walking. So it, yeah. it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, so that's all the positives then, I can give you. Where do we go? <laughs> yeah. We go back where we go again. We, we have, we have a league game. Uh, Wolves are playing good. Uh, that's a pl- tough place to play. I mean, we, we go again and, and we hope and pray that some miracle that some, some, some their the Milan goalkeeper will pull a Pope and get himself thrown out. I, I don't know. I mean, you, you just, you just hope, are you, I just hope that that this weekend is it's typical Spurs. We cannot have a run consistently. We've always got to have a stinker. We got a few good games, look like crap. Have a few good games, look like crap. And you just hope that sequence is good enough to maybe get, get past Milan four. and get top four. And we see what the hell happens in the summer. You know, I don't know. So where do we go, Ozo? Because top four is just like finishing fourth, isn't it? For me, that's not success for me. That's just finishing. It's just money. In a position, yes, money and finishing in a position to get you in a tournament, which we're not, which you know we're probably not going to win. And uh, 
So success for me is winning trophies. But where do we go? Back Saturday, three centre backs, two full backs is wing backs, two defensive midfielders, and hope Kane can um play the other forwards in. Is that where we what we do now, mate? Yeah. I mean, you know, against against Wolves, well, like you said, I mean, top four is such a I, I miss the days when like you know, really trying to get that top four finish was 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 really exciting thing. Get back in the Champions League, you know, the Poch days where you know we'd been out for a few years after our debut in the competition and looking to get back in because that that's such a you know you lose one game, there's still a bunch of games to go. You're not expecting a trophy. Those those were fun days when that was the height of your expectation, and you end up getting third, and it's great. But at this point, fifteen years on from the last trophy. I could honestly be fucked with top four Champions League football next season. I mean, because what what are we going to do in the summer that's going to mean we're going to go and win the Champions League next year? It just becomes monotonous, doesn't it? That's yeah, what you... Arsenal did for ages, and look where they ended up. And they've had to sort of like start again. Yeah, we'll exactly. Do. We're always so, starting again, but the FA it's Cup be... was the big thing. That that that's what should have like like everyone said in the chat. Like we've all said. That's what should have been the priority. So where do we go from here? I mean, we go and play Wolves, and by the time Saturday rolls around, I'll be ready to hope we win again, and then we'll see if we do or not. And then and then, even if we get past Milan, great. It's at some point, even if we somehow bounce our way into the final, we'll lose that. And, and <laughs> it's just it's just a it's never-ending cycle. It's of, a... Of, it's a of these terrible moments. Despair. Yeah. Where do we so, go from here? It's nowhere, I guess. So for me, <laughs> top four, it, it, the, the thing for Spurs, success is top four and a trophy. Big teams finish in the top four and win trophies. Small-minded teams are desperate just to finish in the top four. Well, let, we need to finish oh. in the top four. Now, well, I think they do. I think Man United, no matter there, what, there, I mean, six there, years there are, they haven't won a trophy for. And, yeah, they, no, and, they've, and they've and they've won the trophy now, and they'll finish in the top four. There are your fourteen Liverpool, clubs your in the Premier League. Yeah, there your are Liverpool, fourteen clubs in the Premier League, though. Yeah. But um, but but when we're we're aiming to be a, a top four, a, a, a constant in that top four. So, but we need mm. to you need to be winning trophies. If the club want to move on, they've got to win trophies. It doesn't matter if it's the League Cup, if it's the FA Cup. If it's if you get knocked down into Europa League, if it's the Europa League, if you get knocked down into that shitty Conference League, win it. They're trophies. It. They you've got then you can then progress and you know if t- players see you if you go against another team um, to get a player in, but he sees that you're winning trophies as well as trying to finish in the top four, he's more likely to come to you. He's more likely to go to the the team where he can win stuff. So we've got to win bits to compete for those sorts of players when we start paying for them. It's just frustrating. But, I mean, lads, we've gone on for 57 minutes now. Yep. And I think we're just going to literally blow our own minds, aren't we? It's been a – I mean, it, it, has, it has been good. It is a little therapy session, but I shall still be well annoyed tomorrow morning. I don't know what it will be that will turn my, turn my mood around. But, uh, you know, well, Jack, it, there's, thank there's you. There's nothing that's going to oh. – I was going to say, there's nothing going to change the mood because no. we all know what we just threw away. No, but exactly. You've hit it bang on the head there, Jack. Thanks for coming on. We all know what we've thrown away tonight. The players will hope, for, I'm hoping we won't have one of those interviews where a player comes out and says, oh, we must do better. You know, we know it's not good enough. I'm sick to death of those. I don't want to see them anymore. I don't think Spurs have put one on for ages because I think the fan base were just getting, why don't you lot just can do one? So, Jack, Thanks for coming on, mate. Um, I hope it's been a bit of a help to you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. I appreciate it very much. I enjoy, I, I, as much as you can enjoy a rant session, I, I did enjoy it. Yeah, and um, Isaiah, once again, thanks for coming on, mate. And uh, you could have been out, you know, student union bar. You could have been out, <laughs> you know, mingling. But you've come on here to let us know your thoughts on Spurs Night. And we really appreciate it. So thanks for that, mate. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, if if I had been out somewhere, I probably would have just been saying all this to someone who didn't care in a pub somewhere. <laughs> um, you know, needed a little thanks, session. So, yeah, thanks for absolutely. Me on. And thanks, yeah. Ian. Nice, nice, nice. And everyone is.
thank yeah. you i appreciate that, it that, I, I quite like that that made that's made me feel better already Ian. but <laughs> everybody in the comments tonight thanks i know there's loads of other shows on and you probably want to get around but thanks for coming on to hear us all um rant and rave and we hope it's done you a little bit of uh a little bit of good a little bit of therapy session if you want a little bit more cheese room therapy i'm sure the pod will be out very soon those guys are excellent um and even though we lost tonight we've still got to say it come on you spurs come on you spurs